First one is called Three Cheers for Bryant Park. <laughs> it feels like it was just September and the only thing we had was the Schwartzman building to bedazzle us. Yet, as soon as October hit, the energy changed from that of normal NYC to that special time when pumpkins give way to snowflakes and microseconds. The pumpkins never appeared at all. At Schwartzman, mowing lions can entice the foreign masses, but the lions do not surprise me anymore. What I am surprised of is when the girls from Central and South America in my classes start complaining and barely coded hints about how unsatisfied they are with my teaching. Wouldn't it be something if we took a field trip to Bryant Park, one of the Ecuadorians pleads as if she's never seen snow or ice, having grown up in the highest capital city in the world. No, is my current response to her question. Well, we went to those art galleries, she whines. My students always whine. <laughs> they whine as a, if I am stupid. They flirt with me when I was married. They think that I give a fuck about them. My ex-wife won't let me spend $38 to take the two of us to the ice skating rink. Why would I spend $18 for my pair of skates to tag along with a cadre of students as they fall on their asses? They only think that I'll give them something in return, i.e. better grades on their final exams if we go to Bryant Park. I can go to Bryant Park without a guilt trip, thank you. However, there's something sad in the Ecuadorian's eyes. I only barely care, but I know she is lonely. I see her eat her lunch alone in the cafeteria. I see the type of clothes she wears. Even out of empathy, if you plan one more fun day out of class, they will think you are their personal social director. You know, like Julie from The Love Boat. I am not her. Still, I understand the Ecuadorian's pain. I can kind of feel her point. I walk alone through Bryant Park a lot, trying not to get caught up in the perceived grandeur of the building my MYPL employee of an ex-wife calls the mothership. And while the Yelpers may vote the public restrooms in the park the cleanest in the city, my ex-wife only has to show her work badge one of the few employee perks, she says, to really visit the cleanest restroom in Midtown. <laughs> Bryant Park gives us New Yorkers cheer amid the tears of one lonely Ecuadorian co-ed. I will only do one thing in the future for you, Bryant Park. I will commune with your hidden statue of that female literary Buddha. <laughs> do I have one more? Very quick. Okay. Ecuador before I went and before the earthquake. This is for a friend of mine. I already knew what Ecuador was like before I even went there. It will be the same thing that I will do before it runs away from me. This statement proves not to be true because I've never been there, but I don't want my wife to run away. But Alejandro says that the equator will bring me magic. Leela says that the feeling of the wind will freeze me in a way that she misses. I don't even know what a freezing Andean wind feels like. Leela tells me not to worry. Let the wind pass through my lungs. Miriam says, all this time worrying about the mountains in the middle of summer, I could live on the coast forever, eat cervace, and never see another mountain as long as I live. That's my Ecuador, Jason. You should take that trip. <laughs> I'm the one who brought Miriam. You could think Miriam would complicate things being from the coast and Lila would be jealous, and Susan would stop me from getting my passport to begin with. Instead, everyone creates art, poems, photos, drawings. They fly through the streets of Quito. Sketchbooks and steno pads create some type of mountain hurricane. A group of people with brown hair and brown eyes tossing and sprinkling and sparkling in the midsummer sun. The only other problem that I would have being in Ecuador is that I would be the only non-Spanish speaker. I suppose acting dumb would be part of my personality. I'm a master at acting dumb. <laughs>